Today, in his long-anticipated speech about the Middle East, President Obama endorsed two states for two people. He endorsed a Jewish state for the Jews and a Palestinian state for the Palestinians. He also said that 1967 borders should be the basis for negotiations with land swaps to accommodate Jewish population centers. Will this bring the Middle East any closer to peace? We'll talk about it today on Politics and Religion. Look, there are two things I don't discuss, politics and religion. In my house, we don't talk about politics and we don't talk about religion. I'll talk to you about anything except politics and religion. I never talk about politics and religion. Politics determines how we'll live here on Earth. Religion determines how we'll live forever. I'm Irvin Baxter. I think it's time we talk about it. Well, everyone has been wondering and waiting what President Obama would say about the revolution sweeping throughout the Middle East over the last several months. Uh, he had promised that he would give a speech at this particular time, and he did uh, just a few hours ago. He talked about the yearning for freedom in the hearts of those who live in the Middle East. He said wherever people were truly wanting freedom, that the United States of America would be a supporter of those peoples and would help them in every way that we possibly could. And he talked about the freedom of speech, the freedom of assembly, uh, the freedom to govern themselves instead of being governed by dictators. So it was quite an interesting uh, speech that President Obama had to give. But then finally he got around to what most of us were intensely interested in, and that was the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, he openly endorsed two states for two peoples, and he specifically defined those two states as a Jewish state for Jewish people and a Palestinian state for the Palestinians. Now, this has been something that the Palestinians have been unwilling to endorse. They have not been willing to say yes, this will be a Jewish state, because there's about a million Palestinians living in Israel proper. Israel, uh, the, Israel's worst nightmare is to have a homeland that would ultimately be overrun by non-Jewish people, because uh, Arabs do have children at a much faster rate than the Jewish people. Uh, at least they have. That's been the historic pattern, uh, and that's still the pattern to this day, uh, the Jews fear that someday they would be outnumbered in their own land, and then if they are to embrace democracy and freedom, uh, then they would have to let everyone vote, and the day could come when the people who had outgrown them would actually vote in a, an Arab prime minister of the nation of Israel. Well, that's something that Israel simply cannot accept. Uh, you know, you've got to understand the deep, deep scars in the Jewish psyche because for the last almost 2,000 years they have looked for a place of safety and they have settled in one nation after another after another and sometimes things would go okay for a while but then the tide of anti-Semitism would arise and before long they would face persecution whether it be in Spain, in Germany, in France, in Poland, uh, and on and on. Now, they've never faced that persecution in the United States of America, thankfully. It has been uh, their, their best protector to this point and remains so today. However, they are not even sure about the United States. Uh, many of them have been very nervous about our present president, Barack Obama, that he would, in fact, uh, strong on arm them into an agreement that they don't feel they can live with. And that's the reason the speech that President Obama made today was uh, anticipated with uh, a certain amount of anxiety and fear, as well as hoping that President Obama would have something constructive to say. So that's what's been go going on 
in the Middle East for some time. Israel finally got her own land in 1948, and yet there are people all around that say, you are not supposed to have that homeland. We do not recognize your right to exist. And now then Fatah has formed an alliance with Hamas, who is very clear that they do not believe Israel has a right to exist. They say they will never uh, recognize the right of Israel to exist as a nation in the Middle East. And so now then they're being called on by President Obama to negotiate with this people. And uh, to his credit, President Obama said, how do you expect people to sit down to talk peace with people who openly say they do not believe they have a right to exist? He said, so that's another problem we have to face. Uh, anyway, he, he outlined quite clearly, but then he went on to say, we simply have to get an agreement and he said, we already know what that agreement is basically going to look like. He said, it's going to be two states for two peoples. It will be security for both sides. That's what the people want. They want to live in peace. They want to live in security. At least that's what President Obama believes. And uh, so he said, if we can give peace and security, which would include secure borders, and those borders have to be secure against smuggling of arms into the Palestinian state, which then could be stockpiled for an attack on the nation of Israel. He said, we have to have built in to this agreement safeguards that will, in fact, give the Jewish people security. Uh, finally, he said the two most difficult issues in the Middle East between the Palestinians and the Israelis are ref refugees and the status of Jerusalem. He said those are the two big ones. Now, most people agree that the refugee problem will be settled by refugees being allowed to return to the Holy Land, but only into the area of the Holy Land that will become a Palestinian state, that they will not have a right to go back to Tel Aviv, to uh, Haifa, or any other place that perhaps their forefathers lived 60 or 70 years ago. So quite an extensive speech uh, because I am, have been on the road today. I actually traveled all night last night on the way to my grandson's wedding, which is Saturday. We had to be here today. And I am out in the middle of nowhere. I don't know whether you know where Green Lake is or not, Green Lake, Wisconsin. But I right now am in a guest house overlooking a lake. This is where the wedding is going to be held. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful setting uh, nevertheless, it's out here in the middle of nowhere with very, very limited um, Internet access. So, uh, But I'm broadcasting because I do have a phone line, and we've been able to hook up. JT is anchoring the program back at the End Time Studios. So if the signal is not, not quite as crisp as you are normally used to, I hope you will be able uh, to understand. So the, the reviews are out as far as the speech of Barack Obama. I attempted to download a transcript of the speech so I can analyze it word by word, sentence by sentence. I was not able to do that because of the very uh, weak Internet signal out here, but pro probably by tomorrow we will be able uh, to, to actually uh, get a copy of the speech so we can analyze word for word. And believe me, that's what people around the world are going to be doing because uh, the United States of America is still the only nation with the power and the position to broker a deal between the Palestinians and the Israelis. We are the only nation that the Israelis trust right now, and even us, they have misgivings about. Now, this isn't the end of this story, because Mr. Uh, King Abdullah II of Jordan was just in Washington, D.C. earlier this week, uh, speaking to President Obama, and then uh, my understanding is that Benjamin Netanyahu will be arriving within the next couple of days. He will speak uh, before a joint session of Congress, and it's going to be very interesting to see what uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu has to say in response to the proposals of President Obama. Now, uh, Netanyahu is no babe in the woods. He has held many, many governmental positions. He's been around. He knows what it takes to survive. He is a political survivor, and he knows when to reply, and he knows when to keep silent on certain issues uh, rather than clashing directly with the president. 
Uh, he knows how to skirt the issues, to nuance the issues, and to say enough to get by but not say so much that it would bring him and the nation of Israel into direct confrontation with the United States of America. So uh, Netanyahu is certainly a skilled politician, and it's going to be interesting to see how forceful he is in response to the, pre to the speech of Barack Obama. Now, the reason all this is so, so, so important is because you are dealing with a prophecy. I'm talking about a prophecy that, um, well, le let's say it this way. We're talking about a prophecy that will be one of the three or four greatest prophetic fulfillments in the last 2,000 years. That's what we're talking about today. So we're not talking about some little deal. We're talking about a big, big deal. And that's the reason it's so very, very important. And when they, in fact, do get this peace deal, and they will get a deal in some form or fashion, the only question is when. When they get it, it will mark the beginning of the final seven years to the Battle of Armageddon. It will mark the beginning of the final seven years to the rapture of the church. So this is a much anticipated deal. It also will mark the beginning of the final seven years to the revealing of Jesus Christ to this world when he comes back to this earth to reign as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is going to mark the beginning of this deal. So when we talk about the Middle East a lot, there's a reason to talk about it. Now, how quick could we get something done? The Palestinians want to declare a Palestinian state at the United Nations in September, which of course is not very far away right now. Let me see, June, July, August. We're about uh, three and a half months or so, maybe four months, away from the time that that would happen. So if that would happen and if the world community re would recognize Israel and, and the Palestinians say we must be recognized uh, along pre-1967 borders, well, uh, President Obama actually endorsed uh, the pre-1967 borders as a starting point for negotiation. Uh, now, what he said was, with land swaps, we all know that there's uh, somewhere around 300,000 Jewish people living on the territory that was under the British mandate prior to 1947, actually, and then the Jordanian people took it by force during the war of 1948-49. Uh, that was not Jordanian, never has been Jordanian, and yet they occupied that land from 1949, actually, when the armistice was signed, all the way to 1967 when the Jewish people took it back. Who did they take it back from? Well, they took it back from the Jordanians. But now the Palestinians are saying, that's our land. Never has been their land. Yet now that all of a sudden they've convinced the whole world that that is their land. So quite a contest. Now the truth of the matter is, though, we're dealing with covenant land. We're dealing with the promised land. So this is no, uh, this is no little deal. You're dealing with God here. God is listening in on every meeting in the White House. He listened in on Barack Obama's speech today. He's going to be listening carefully to what Benjamin Netanyahu has to say when he appeared before the joint session of Congress within the next few days. I'm telling you, God is very much on top of this whole situation because he promised Abraham 4,000 years ago, I will put my, I will, uh, I will give you that land for you and your, your ancestors, your descendants after you forever. That's a promise God has made. End Time Ministries presents End of the Age, a 30-minute commercial-free TV show hosted by Irvin Baxter. Every Monday, End of the Age airs on the Church Channel at 9 p.m., Daystar at 10 p.m., and on TBN every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m., all Central Standard Time. On End of the Age, Irvin depicts how modern issues like an establishment of a one world government, the religion of Islam, a coming World War III, and more, line up so clearly with Bible prophecies written over 2,000 years ago. To get tomorrow's news today, be sure to tune into End of the Age every Monday on the Church Channel at 9 p.m., Daystar at 10 p.m., and on TBN every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m., all Central Standard Time. Visit endtime.com for more details or call us 
at 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. The Bible prophesies about four great spirits which control the actions